and welcome back to Explore Bio. Today's video on AFLP marker is made on the request of Mr. Sagar and Ms. Apita. If you also have any such request, please mention in the comment below. I would love to make a video on it. Before beginning the topic, one should know that markers are the tools that are used to distinguish DNA, individuals, populations or a species. You can learn more about this in my marker video given in the link below. Now before directly jumping onto the topic of AFLP marker, you must also know that all the molecular marker techniques fall broadly under one of the two categories. Number one, the restriction based and number two, PCR amplification based. The example of restriction based technique is RFLP marker. In this, the DNA is restricted with a specific restriction endonucleases followed by hybridization with radio labeled probes for the detection of variation on the gels. PCR based markers include SSRs, ISSRs, RPDs, ILPs, etc. You must check out my other marker videos whose link is given in the description below. In 1995, Peter Voss and his colleagues developed a new marker type, which is the combination of both the restriction based as well as the PCR based method. This marker type was named as AFLP or Amplified Fragment Length Polymorphism. AFLP involves the digestion of genomic DNA using restriction endonucleases followed by adapter ligation and PCR amplification. The amplified products are visualized on high resolution polyacrylamide gels or automated sequencers. The variation in the length of fragments is analyzed which gives us the estimate about genetic relationships among the individuals or their variations. The first and the foremost thing you need for AFLP is a very good quality of intact and pure genomic DNA which should be free from protein and contaminants as it will hinder in the downstream processes. So the next step is the digestion with restriction endonucleases. Usually a rare cutter such as Eco R1 and a frequent cutter such as MSE1 is used producing sticky ends. A rare cutter identifies 6 base pair restriction site and cleaves it while frequent cutter identifies and cleaves 4 base pair restriction site. Researcher must note that if he or she has a poor quality of DNA, restriction would not occur properly giving the false result. Restriction is followed by adapter ligation. Adapters are double stranded short oligonucleotide sequences of usually 14 to 20 base pair. Two different adapters are used, one each for Eco R1 and another for MSE1. These adapters of known sequences serves as the target for PCR amplification in the later steps. Amplification is done in two phases. The first phase is known as pre-selective amplification and the second one is the selective amplification. So first let's talk about pre-selective amplification. As the name itself suggests, it is the first round of amplification in which few fragments are selectively amplified. You might think that what is the need to reduce the number of fragments to be amplified. But there is a reason. During the restriction with restriction endonucleases, thousands of fragments are obtained, which are very difficult to get separated and analyzed. To reduce the number of fragments amplified, primers with additional nucleotide at 3' prime end are used. A PCR reaction is set, which contains the genomic DNA, DNTPs, polymerase, Eco R1 and MEC1 primers with one additional nucleotide and a PCR of 20 cycles is set. Using the PCR product of pre-selective amplification step, a second round of amplification is done which is known as a selective amplification with even more stringent primers. Here the primer contains additional three nucleotides to reduce the number of fragments amplified. Few cycles of touchdown PCR is set to perform amplification. In touchdown PCR, the annealing temperature is lowered by certain degrees after every PCR cycle to improve the amplification efficiency. If AFLP separation and analysis is to be performed on sequencer, in that case, fluorescently labeled primers are used during selective amplification. Now comes the separation of fragments. So this may be done on a 6% polyacrylamide gel or automated sequencer containing pop gels. The bending pattern of the fragments is analyzed manually or with analytical software. Now let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of AFLP marker. As restriction sites are present across the whole genome of an individual, 
which makes this marker to analyze multiple locus at once. The sequence information about the organism is not essential as the primers complementary to the adapter sequences are designed. In contrast to RFLP, which takes longer time for probe hybridization and more skills, AFLP is comparatively simple. As PCR amplification of fragments is done, AFLP is possible with lesser amount of genomic template. The results are highly reproducible considering you have a high quality of DNA as input. Now some of the disadvantages. AFLP cannot be done with poor quality of DNA or degraded DNA. As AFLP are dominant in nature, they cannot detect homozygous or heterozygous individuals. One cannot ascertain which fragment belongs to which DNA locus as AFLP are multi-locus in nature. It must be remembered that none of the existing marker can be called as best marker. Every marker has its own advantages and disadvantages and depending upon the situation, one or more marker may be used for this study. Let's briefly revise what we have learned today. So AFLP is a dominant type of molecular marker. It involves restriction followed by PCR amplification of genomic DNA. Primers and adapters are used for pre-selective and selective PCR amplifications. Fragments can be analyzed either on polyacrylamide gel or automated sequencers. If you like the video, please share it with your colleagues. Do mention in the comment what new you learned today. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you.